In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the build process for our corner cabinet here. Now, this is a pretty straightforward project, and so we're not going to be using our 3D modeling software uh, for this particular build video. I looked at a lot of videos on YouTube, and I wanted to do something a little bit different with my videos. So I wanted to do what I would call a uh, virtual build video. So we're going to walk you through all of the cut process to get your pieces cut and then how all those pieces would then ultimately um, go together. But we're going to do it virtually within the computer software. Now, in this particular video, we're not going to be using our 3D modeling software because I felt like the, the, uh, the project that we're working on is a real simple, real basic project. So we're just going to work here in our drawing software. Now, uh, I uh, was brought up using CorelDRAW in a different industry, and so I do all of my uh, basic 2D layouts here in CorelDRAW, and then once I kind of have it all nailed down here in CorelDRAW with all my necessary dimensions and so forth, then I'll hop over to SketchUp and I'll create a 3D model. Now, if you purchase these plans that we have available in our Etsy store, there is a link uh, below in the description. If you purchase these plans, they will come with a PDF file, um, and they'll also come with the SketchUp 3D model, so you can refer to that. SketchUp is a free uh, 3D modeling software that you can download and then open our model, and you can get all your dimensions, and you can visually see the finished product uh, in 3D. And we have separate videos that will walk you through uh, how to get dimensions out of SketchUp and some of the basic things you're going to want to do uh, as part of your build process. But I find it very, very, very helpful if we go through these build videos, look at our 3D model, and before we actually go and start cutting wood. Um, if you have a real good understanding of how it's supposed to be done on the computer, and you're doing something in the field, and something doesn't look right, it probably doesn't look right because it's not right. And you can go back and refer to the 3D model or refer to uh, your drawing plans. So at any rate, you're going to get a PDF file. You're going to get your CorelDRAW file uh, if you happen to have CorelDRAW. You're also going to get your uh, 3D SketchUp file that you can refer to for any necessary dimensions uh, if something is a little bit unclear uh, throughout this video. But hopefully, that won't be an issue. All right? So let's go ahead and get started and kind of walk you through this. This is our finished product right here. Um, it's all made entirely of fence pickets. As you can see, you can certainly use one by material as well uh, if you wanted to make it out of oak or pine. Um, but these fence pickets, they, uh, right now, these are, uh, uh, they call it white cedar at my local big box store. I love Home Depot. Um, but, um, but anyhow, that's primarily why I, where I purchased my lumber, primarily because Home Depot is much closer to me than it is Lowe's. Um, but at any rate, uh, these are white cedar pickets. They're $3.24 as of this video recording. So they're pretty economical. So this whole thing, uh, you know, is a pretty economical build. And so let's go ahead and get started and take a look at um, this project in a bit more detail. So what we're gonna have to do, our fence pickets, of course, come six foot long. And so we're gonna need two at 72 inches, two at 69 inches, and two at 66 inches. Okay, so that's kind of our first step. Now. If you look here, this is kind of how this is going to go together. Now, sometimes it just depends on exactly how we want this to go together. So you see how this one panel is a little bit different than this panel. Sometimes we might want to do this. And just that, that uh, just a little bit different there. Um, so in other words, these two will come together, and I'll explain that why here in a minute. And then, of course, we would just shuffle these right up to that corner, like, and do something like that, okay? So you may decide to do that. It just kind of depends on your situation. Um, again, once we get a little bit further along, we'll discuss um, the two different options there, okay? So once we have that complete, then what we need to do, um, so we've cut our, our two side pieces, our two side configurations. So we're using six pickets in that case. Um, so we've spent about $20 up to this point. Okay, um, so just kind of keep that in mind. We're using six pickets, 324 a picket, um, so roughly 20 bucks. Okay, so then what we need to do is we need to create some of these pieces. These pieces will make up our shelves. Now, 
the pickets that I just showed you, those happen to come six inches wide. But if you get like a regular pressure treated picket or a regular cedar picket, you'll probably find that they're five and a half inches wide. So this dimension that I'm going to show you right here right now could change slightly depending on how big uh, or how wide your picket is. Okay. Something else to keep in mind here that the spacing between each one of these pickets is the thickness of your picket. Now, the reason I like using the white cedar pickets that you see here is they're actually a full three quarter inch thick. So they have a little bit more heft to them. Whereas the treated pickets and the regular cedar pickets, um, they're only five eighths of an inch thick. And you can even get these pickets in one inch thick where the actual picket is a full one inch thick. Me personally, I've never used those for anything, but because I find these three quarter inch pickets, they're, they're a full three quarter inch thick, so they're plenty heavy for basically anything I want to build. Um, and I build a lot of stuff out of fence pickets. So if you like this project, if you look at some of our other projects uh, as, that we're going to be posting, we've got lots and lots of projects about fence pickets for you. So, so at any rate, you can see here we have five of these that are 26 inches. And so we need to go ahead and cut those at a 45 degree angle. And then this, I, I if I were you, I would measure this length in real life before I actually went to go cut. So find out how, how wide your fence pickets are, measure that, you can see mine says it's exactly 15 inches. And then we would go ahead and cut five of those uh, at uh, 15 inches, okay? And so you can see here in my layout, you can see how I've kind of set this out. So this piece here is 26, 26, 26, 26, 26. And so there's our five. And then we have two 15s. And then you can see we have boom, 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 three 15s right there. Okay. So now the only thing that's kind of remaining is these options. And these are our, our cleats. So they're... Um, they're typically, uh, when I'm cutting a, uh, a full picket here that is six inches, then my cleats would be 1.75 inches. And the reason being is because I can get three cleats. Let me just show you here. I can get three cleats out of one inch or one picket wide. See, so I can get three strips out of that. So that's why I would do it at, um, at an inch and three quarter. You'll have just a smidge left over if your picket is six inches okay so at any rate that's what i do uh, so this last piece right here uh, that you have left over that becomes all of our cleats okay and so we need uh you can see we need a, a total of we need two cleats per shelf so we need 10 cleats in all and again um you can probably just do them all at six and three quarter most typically when i'm building these for real i have the setup just like this where the, these cleats meet at that point right there. Um, now, like I said, that can change, uh, but that is what I usually do, and I'll, and I'll explain why here in just a second. So uh, one of the things that we can do is, because we have these cleats, I'll go back to a look at our drawing here. So you see our cleats, boom, right there? See how those two come together at the corner? We can actually put a hinge there. So these shelves can come off, which in this case they did, um, and these shelves can come off, and we can fold this, the two sides together flat. Uh, and then we could just, you know, have a nice flat shelf, put it back open, and then pop our shelves back on. Boom, you're done. Um, and then if we wanted it to be permanent, then we could run some brads from the outside. We could run some brads down uh, from the top of the shelf into our cleat, however we want to do that. Okay. So once we have all of our pieces cut, now it's just time to put it together. So again, you would just lay your three boards out on your on your uh, work table, and then these are the dimensions: three inches, seven and seven eighths, and so forth. Now that is to the top of our cleat, fellas. So there it is, top top of our cleat, and we can go ahead and put all of those in. Um, so I would just mark it, then use my 12 inch square and, and run a line, and that's where we're going to put our cleat. Now the spacing between, again, is the thickness of our picket. So I would just take some scraps you might have laying around and use little spacer blocks to get that spacing. And then we're going to lay this down. Now, on our cleats, it's not absolutely necessary. Uh, but one thing I like to do, let me show you the drawing. 
You see this right here? I put a 30 degree angle on this. Not sure why I choose 30 degrees. I just like 30 degrees. So you'll see that a lot in our projects. So I just uh, put that at an angle. Again, you wouldn't have to, um, certainly. But you can see it does actually look nice. Uh, you could use a 45 degree angle. Really, you can use any a degree of angle you want. It's just, to me, it adds a little bit more finished look to the whole piece. Um, in this case, because my shelf is at 45 degrees, uh, it may not be a bad idea to put those at 45 degrees instead of 30. I think in this particular instance, I did use 30, though, because um, that's what I'm, I'm used to using the most. Um, and I, you can't see it in this picture. Uh, you maybe see it right there. That second shelf, won't go all the way to the corner. There'll be a tiny little gap right there. Um, so that shelf actually ends right there. So there'll be a tiny little gap there. Um, it's not a big deal, uh, but I just want you to be aware of that. You can't really put anything back there in that little tiny corner anyhow, so it's not, it's not going to affect the shelf uh, whatsoever in any way. Um, all right, so we'll go ahead and lay our cleats down. Boom, 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 boom. Real simple. Now, what I like to do, I have a Ryobi cordless... Um, uh, narrow crown stapler. They're about $120 at Home Depot and they're an absolute lifesaver. So what I would do is put down my cleats. I do like to use wood glue. So I would encourage you to do that. Wood glue will definitely add to the stability of the piece for sure. But um, so I would go ahead and add a little bit of wood glue to my cleat, put it down there and go ahead and pop it. So I'd, I'd use two or three staples per board to hold those cleats in place. And then uh, as you can see here, I do believe, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. In this case, I did. You can see I went back through and I added two screws per board. Um, so you would use inch and a quarter screws if you're using three quarter inch thick pickets. I went ahead and used two screws per board um, just to hold those cleats in place. Sometimes I don't, though. It just kind of depends on the situation. So, um, so anyhow, go ahead and put in your cleats at these dimensions. Boom, boom, boom. Pretty straightforward. And the biggest thing is, the biggest thing is, the biggest thing is, why am I saying that over and over again? Because I want you to pay attention. <laughs> why? Because I have built literally dozens of these corner cabinets. And it seems like every other one, even though I've built so many of them, I keep screwing up. And it drives me batty. Um, so what I, <laughs> what I really want to draw your attention to is you have to have a right and you have to have a left, okay? So two lefts and two rights aren't gonna work for you. So when you're laying your boards down and you're putting on your cleats, just make sure when you lay your other boards down, you do it the absolute reverse of what you just did. Gotta be backwards. That way you have a right and you have a left. Now, earlier I showed you about the overlap. I only do this where I connect the cleats at the point here, I would only do that if I'm making a folding one, okay? But in this case, uh, maybe you don't want to make a folding one. And so this is what I just want to point out to you. So when you're doing that second panel, uh, you're just going to leave that three-quarter inch gap. So you, so you take a piece of scrap, you put that up against this, this that tall board here, and then you, you hold your cleat out three-quarters of an inch, and that way you can put them together overlapping like that. Okay, um, so it's just it's just a, a, a matter of difference. Now, here is one thing that you'll see right off rip is when you do it this way, the point of which the shelf interacts with the outside edge is the same. When you do it this way, where you're going to have that overlap, you're going to see that this shelf actually extends past that a little bit. Let's see in our picture if we can see that a little bit. Um. I think you can because I believe on this one, I did not make it a folding one. And But you can see here where the shelf ends kind of right at the end of that picket, like in the drawing. But over here, you can see it clearly extends over. And down here, maybe you can see it a little bit. But see how much farther that extends over compared to there? Um, I don't know if you can really see that quite that well. But, but at any rate, I believe that is this bottom one, if we look closely. Yeah, you can see it's, it's pretty close to the edge of that, um, where over here it extends quite a bit past. Um, so, but like I say, it, it's not really that distinguishable in real life. It may look like it's a huge difference in your drawing, 
um, but it's really not that big a deal. So that's just kind of, kind of something to keep in mind. Um, actually, this isn't really true. This, this would be like this. So what we would do is the cleat itself would overlap. So this is this is how it would really appear in 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 real life, okay? So, and yeah, I, and you can look at that drawing, and now this actually looks like what it is. So there's just a little bit overlap here. There's a little bit more of a gap there. It's it's not that significant. Um, so at any rate, but then by by doing it this way, we can then run brad nails and screws from the outside this way and this way. So I would run. Screws and brad nails. I use I I just use staples to hold it together, and then I'd come back in and run screws in there, but from both directions, and then that will hold that corner actually quite good for you. And actually, you know, looking at this, this does not extend any farther over. It's just this piece that's a little bit different. Um, if you if you see if you if you made them all uh, one size. So if we made them all 16 and 3 quarter, that one cleat would be a little bit different. It wouldn't come out quite as far because you're, 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 you're having the overlap. Now here I'm telling you to actually make two different size cleats. Uh, in, in actual reality, I don't think that would be that, um, that critical if we just made them all one size. And that 3 quarter inch difference, this, this would just, so that cleat would just be held back a little bit farther. Um, because of that extra distance, but to me, it's not that big a deal. So that's just something to keep in mind. Okay, but then that's it. I mean, that's that's essentially it. Um, there's not much more to it uh, other than that. And then these shelves, I just put in there, and I just put in some brad nails from the top, or, or I actually I use staples. I'm sorry, um, but I use narrow crown staplers, run three staples uh, into my cleat for each shelf, and that's it. The, the, the whole the whole thing is put together, and this is a great project um, because it's quick. It doesn't take it doesn't take very long at all to complete. As as pretty easy, you can even do it with the most minimal tools. Um, you know, you, if you have a skill saw, um, you can make all these angles with uh, just a 12 inch square. Um, you can make those angle cuts real easy, and of course, you can cut these down to length real easy with your skill saw and square. And you've got all the dimensions right here. And like I say, um, in the description below, there's a link to the Etsy shop that has the the um, the full uh, woodworking plans and the build videos um, for this particular project. It has this video plus some additional build videos that I made for this project. Um, and then also it has the 3D SketchUp file as well if you want to look at that in detail before you actually go through the process of building this. But I think you're going to find this to be a very straightforward, easy project for you, and one that's going to look great inside or out. Um, and happy building. If you have any questions, I really encourage you to, to drop us an email or give us a call. Our phone number is 346-432-6272. Reach out to us. We'd be happy to answer any questions you have uh, on this build video. Thanks for watching.